All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Freddy's Whippet's YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to train your Whippet off lead. What I'm gonna speak about in this video is three really simple, basic steps to help you get started with that. And these three steps are gonna help you with any breed of dog that you have. I've got Freddy Boy just here. He definitely just farted because it absolutely stinks. And he's got, oh man, he's got the fart face. Freddy Boy, did you just stink? Oh, it's gone right to the back of my throat, that one. Disclaimer, I'm not a dog trainer. I'm not trained in any way to train dogs. I am speaking purely from years worth of experience. So if you're a dog trainer and you're watching this and you want to chime in in the comments, please feel free to add your, uh, to add your two cents and uh, help everybody out. The first step is something that I learned in the very early days of getting Freddy. I invited my friend John over, who is a dog trainer. And the first thing I remember him doing was asking me, he was like, what motivates Freddy? And I was like, what do you mean? In my head, I'm thinking, do you want me to get up a Tony Robbins video and sit him in front of it and try to, I don't know, motivate him with music or what, what, what sort of question is that? He was like, have you got a toy? I was like, yeah, here's a toy. Piece of food, yeah, here's a piece of food. He put the food down, he put the toy down and Freddy went straight to the food. He was like, there's your answer. Freddy is motivated by food. So that is the first step that you need to work on with your dog. It takes a couple of minutes. If your dog's interested by toys, that's fine. If your dog's interested by food, that's also fine. Figuring that out is gonna give you a really easy way to reward your dog with their favorite thing in the world every single time they give you a behavior that you've asked for. The next thing is to start small. So don't if you've got a puppy, don't take them outside straight after they've woken up with a full belly of food because they're not gonna care about you. They're not gonna wanna listen to you because every sound, every movement is way more interesting than you are. If you've got a young dog, wait for them to have had a walk, wait for them to have burnt a bit of energy. I'd always advise training them before dinner so they actually have something to work for if they're motivated, if they're motivated by food. Um, if, you take, if you take the dog out and they're motivated by food and they've got a full stomach, they're gonna be less inclined to want to listen to you. Um, so bear that in mind. But when I say start small, I'm talking indoors. Start in a hallway if you've got one in your house. If you don't, then any space that you have is absolutely fine especially if you're teaching them recall or to sit, wait, do whatever it is that you wanna do. All you need is a few steps to be able to distance yourself from your dog and you can make it work. So find a little bit of space, you might have to move a sofa out of the way to create that space. Um, but starting indoors is gonna reduce distractions. Obviously there's not gonna be squirrels running around your house. There's not gonna be cracking twigs or conkers falling from the trees. There's not gonna be kids running around playing football on their scooters or screaming or wanting to come and say hello to your puppy. It's just gonna be like a little classroom session. Uh, along the lines of keeping it small or keeping the, um, uh, sorry, starting small, um, keep training sessions 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be an extensive hour to two hour uh, lesson because the dog's gonna get quite bored quite easily. Um, get. Oh, and again, what is wrong with you, mate? Oh, he's really put me off now. Blimey. Anyway, start small. And the third and final thing is to remain consistent with commands. We have to remember dogs don't know how to speak English and they're never gonna learn how to speak English either. All they hear and all they learn is the mumble that's coming out of their owner's voice and also the tonality. So you can say, oh, you know, you're speaking your baby voice like we all do to our dogs, and they're waggling their tails. Freddie absolutely stinks right now. And they're, you know, pouring you and they love it. But if they do something bad and you change your tone of voice, they're like, oh, that's not the baby voice. I think I'm gonna go put myself in my bed. Um, so we do have to bear that in mind. With that being said, and keeping, uh, keeping commands consistent, if you are teaching your dog recall and you're using their name to come back, you're using the word come or come here or come back, 
uh, if you're using a dog whistle and you're using all three of these commands, it's going to be very much like a human trying to learn three different languages or three new words or three different languages. Um, so you're asking a lot of your dog, which is why I say remain consistent. If you're teaching your dog to come back to you and you prefer to use their name or you prefer to use the word come, um, use what works for you. A previous dog that I had, his name was Orlando and screaming Orlando just didn't feel right. It didn't come naturally to me. So I used the word come and I've used that same word with Freddie. And because it's the only word I've ever used when I say come, 90% of the time he's pretty sharp. He's like, oh, let's get my skinny bum back over to the guy who feeds me. So with these three first steps, it's going to fast track you guys, both you and your dog, uh, to have a better relationship. Walking a dog off lead is the most rewarding thing you can ever do. I'd never recommend, no matter how well behaved your dog is, to walk them off lead on main roads where there's buses, public transport, cars, families walking on the pathway. It's just never worth the risk. I'm giving you guys these three tips to get you started so you can walk your dog off leads in dog parks, the woods, down by the beach. Maybe you're going on a holiday within your country. It just gives you the freedom to enjoy your time, to watch the world go by whilst your dog has the freedom to do whatever it is that he or she wants to get up to. So I hope these three things help. If you do have any questions regarding these three topics, sorry, these three things, um, or any questions regarding this topic, uh, get involved in the comments. If you're a dog trainer and you're watching this video, please feel free. If you think I've missed anything, or if you think I've misguided people, please correct me in the comments. It's so helpful uh, for people because I don't think there's enough basic information like this available on the internet. So I'm gonna go and let Freddie help because I think he might need a number two. I'm also gonna get him his dinner because it's almost that time. Freddie, are you a, are you a hungry boy? All right guys, thank you so much for watching and Freddie and I will see you in the next one.